Dr. Sebi? I can call you Dr. Sebi, right? Yes, sir. Let Quite me ask you a question. In his book, Let's Get Well, Pavo Areola states that people of African descent are not programmed or cannot digest milk, cheese, and other dairy products. Could you elaborate on this? Yes, this is the reason for establishing the African biomineral balance. When Mr. Pavo Ariola made a statement that we are not programmed to digest milk if you are of African descent, I understood clearly what he was saying, but many of the readers of the book did not, primarily because there, there is a part of this whole healing process that need to be considered and was never brought to the forefront, whether that we were not as awakened or whether we just ignore it. That aspect is genetics. Genetics is very important because here Mr. Pavo Ariola is showing us that if your ancestors are from Africa, that your body is not programmed to digest milk, so there must be a difference with the African race and any other race of people. That is his genetical structure. And this is the very foundation on which the Usha Research Institute has built its foundation, has built its edifice. And building the edifice based on genetics, then it necessitate a substance to be developed that would be consistent with that particular genetical group. This has not been considered by nutritionists or pathologists, and this is the reason why we at the Usha Institute, Institute feels that they have not really arrived at a point that they could complement as well as they would like to, because they have not considered genetics. Genetics is very extremely important. Why? Because everything on the planet is constructed genetically different, placed in a particular environment, and on specific geographies. Like for instance, we talk about genetics, environment, they all are related. Why? Because the gorilla lives in Africa where the temperature is warm, it's in the tropics. But we find another, another gene group, the gorilla. He lives in Alaska, where it is very cold. So we find now that one gene could live in an environment the other cannot. We also find that the gene group, the difference, could ingest certain substance not so for the other. We are using the gorilla and the polar bear, for example, again. The polar bear could ingest meat and it would be proper with his dietary program and consistent with his biological and genetical structure. As for the gorilla, he cannot ingest meat. It would be adverse to his particular gene. Why? because he was not programmed or constructed in such a way. He lives in the forest where it's tropical. Your brain would not accept seeing a polar bear sitting under an acacia tree in the Serengeti Plain in the month of August. Your brain would tell you that this is something that is uncosmic, that it is impossible. Again, we go to another structure. We go to the birds. The eagle, it eats meat, but not a quetzal. The quetzal does not eat meat, yet they both are birds. One eat meat, the other eat fruits. So we go to the plants. The plants also shows us that there is a genetical marriage to the whole cosmic arrangement of things. The plant, take for instance, the burdock. The burdock plant is a plant that lives in the temperate region. Its structure allow it to live in the temperate region. But as for the kalawala, the kalawala lives in the tropical region of the planet. The environment is not temperate, it is tropical, so it could live. So the plants are showing us that they too obey 
this cosmic arrangement. As for the food of the Kalawala, we find that it lacks potassium phosphate. That is the predominant, the predominant mineral. As for the burdock, it is iron. So we see that both plants obey just like the Quetzal and the eagle, like the gorilla and the polar bear. We have the Kalawala and the burdock. They eat different foods and they live in different environment. 